This illegal conduct means higher prices. Live Nation often sacrifices profits it could earn as a venue owner by letting its venues sit empty rather than opening them to artists who do not use Live Nation promotion services. That was U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland just last week announcing the U.S. Justice Department is suing Live Nation, the owner of Ticketmaster, saying, uh, alleging that it has illegally monopolized the live music industry, harming fans, artists, and venues in the process, a claim the company denies. But if that news wasn't bad enough for the entertainment giant, consider this. Australia is now investigating a potential Ticketmaster data breach affecting an estimated 560 million Ticketmaster customers, over half a billion people. Those behind the attack, apparently, according to reports, are said to be offering that data for $500,000, half a million, on the dark web. Uh, the data includes customers' names, addresses, phone numbers, and partial credit card details, including the last four digits of credit and debit cards and card expiration dates, according to HackRead, which first reported the data breach. And with that many, um, one would assume that it's all over the world, including here in Canada. Ticketmaster and its parent company, Live Nation, have yet to confirm that the data breach took place. They've not made a public statement uh, yet about the hackers' claims. Um, Ticketmaster didn't respond to, Global was doing the story earlier this week and they didn't respond to a request for comment from them. Joining me now is Katina uh, Michael. She is a professor at the School for the Future of Innovation in Society and the School of Computing and Aug Augmented Intelligence at Arizona State University. But I believe she's in Australia tonight. Katina, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Tell me a bit about um, just how this unfolded because I gather, I, I, I thought it was a time zone issue that Australia sort of had the first reports about this, but it looks like Australia really is at the forefront of looking into this. We are. We believe that we have about 2 million records compromised here in Australia, but the others are throughout the globe. And just today, I've received an email to my personal account uh, from Ticketek that is a, a, a sub of uh, Ticketmaster basically saying we've become aware of a cyber incident impacting Ticket Ticketek Australia account holder information, which is stored in a cloud-based platform hosted by a reputable global third-party supplier. We would like to reassure you that Ticketek has secure encryption methods and uh, has everything okay with your passwords and so forth, but it continues. We've also notified the Australian Cybersecurity Centre and we are liaising with the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner and the National Office of Cybersecurity in relation to this incident, this breach of these 2 million credit card numbers in Australia. But looking across the globe, we believe it's much larger. Nothing has yet to, to be verified, but they are making massive claims. This uh, organization, this black hat criminal hacker group called Shiny Hunters, stating 560 million records are being stored on breach forums on the dark web, ready for someone to buy them in bulk. Wow. Yes, I, someone sent me the Ticket Tech, um, Ticket Tech notice as well a little bit earlier. I was just reading through it. So in some ways, I guess that is confirmation that there's been a breach, at least in Australia, but we haven't heard much yet from Ticketmaster itself. Uh, now, one would assume if your business is selling tickets online that you would have top-notch, top-of-the-line security systems in place. What do you think might have happened here? Well, a combination of many things, possibly. Uh, the first thing that the data was not encrypted, you'd have to think that a company this size with so many footholds across the world would have encrypted data, which would mean that at least it would make it hard for this uh, black hat criminal hacker group to have decrypted the data unless they had the keys somehow. But the encryption was the first stop shop in my eyes. The second thing that may have happened, apart from the well-known phishing attacks, uh, that are constantly hitting employees in corporate networks uh, is a bit of social engineering. We also don't know if there was movement between employees at Ticketmaster and competitor companies. Uh, many of our listeners wouldn't know, but uh, back in uh, 2014, uh, there was a massive uh, investigation by Ticketmaster actually uh, gaining unauthorized access to their competitor website uh, through social engineering techniques and other techniques because of employee movement between two organizations. And that charge went down uh, 
uh, I think it was around about uh, 2020. Uh, so it hasn't been that long ago since Ticketmaster has actually been a perpetrator themselves, being fined $10 million by the federal court. Well, uh, when we look at the data that's been compromised, I was had one person I was speaking to briefly today who said that, you know, in of itself, what is available for sale isn't necessarily, I mean, it's bad, but how bad is it? Well, it's pretty bad. I mean, what can we do with uh, mobile phone numbers together with credit card numbers and other things? Uh, certainly, we can have card not present fraud. Uh, we can go on a field day with some of these numbers on the internet, although mm -hmm. many websites now are asking for two-factor authentication. The second thing that may happen is that identity fraud may take place, so details are taken, and then uh, your identity is compromised, and then other credit applications online are used to gain access to more information and perhaps more credit. But the personal information is that which we're mostly concerned about in terms of phishing attacks, all these email addresses that may be now used, right, the confirmed email addresses uh, of the latest uh, time frame, and they can be used to actually continue to try and penetrate organizations and personal systems. So new phishing attacks being unleashed on these new email addresses that have been taken, but also someone is able to steal your phone number. Uh, they can do SIM jacking and you can drip right. a service provider into believing uh, you have uh, information that is yours so that you can have a, a phone, for example, and then go ahead with two-factor authentication. Right. Um, I was reading earlier that there was, it wasn't that people were casting doubt on whether all these, that many accounts had been compromised. Um, but there was some doubt that it was as big as it was. And I'm wondering why we haven't heard from Ticketmaster yet. You mentioned Ticket Tech today in Australia has been warning its customers and it's a subsidiary, I guess, but we haven't heard from the larger company about sort of acknowledging this really massive breach. It's a good question. Uh, often we've seen a delay from the cloud computing data breach, if that's what it is, uh, to informing customers throughout the globe. We've seen this traditionally over the last decade and a bit. There's always a delay, sometimes seven days, sometimes 14 days, and that is just too long. Customers need to be made aware that they need to get into their uh, personal accounts for that provider and change their username and password, if not delete their account if they're really concerned, but also do other things like watch for strange transactions on their credit cards. Um, perhaps even freeze the card that they commonly use and then take additional precautions to see if there are unexpected bills arriving, but also just that fundamental thing of changing your password and making sure you're not using the same password across different service providers because that does leave you vulnerable. You know, use a password manager, but if we're slow to inform subscribers, then we're slow for those subscribers to act. But the other thing that we've seen, traditionally these hacks are getting larger. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're talking into the hundreds of millions now if we want to go and see different attacks. But this outfit has been responsible for the Animal Jam 46 million hack, the Microsoft uh, GitHub private account where they took 500 gigabytes of code, the Pizza Hut attack in Australia, and even the AT&T wireless 70 million wireless account uh, hack uh, most recently. But just in May alone, they were responsible for 200 million records being stolen from about a dozen companies, not just Ticketmaster. So why are we slow to uh, communicate to our subscribers? One is brand damage and the risk appetite, but the other thing is Ticketmaster may well not know how deep this breach runs. And they may be actually trying to figure out whether they'll keep uh, the individuals quiet by saying, we'll pay you a ransom mm -hmm. and give us back the data or some other alternative we are not aware of. What's happened here? Because it's not as if hacking is new. And yet, uh, as you point out, it seems like the the attacks, at least we're hearing about them, and they seem to have been got, gotten bigger. And I'm wondering how they found this vulner these vulnerabilities when I feel like we're fairly aware of this problem. We are aware of this problem and I would say the greatest uh, percent of hacks may be disgruntled employees who have left the organization, uh, potentially 
even ethical hackers, although this is very much motivated by greed, this is a grab and go kind of situation, this shiny hunter attack. It's not really there to say, we'll sell each record for a cent, which is traditionally what we've seen. You know, the, mm -hmm. the prices of these credit cards are not that high, even those gold standard accounts. Uh, but when you think about it, they're asking for less than a dollar per record per person, right? So 560 million global customers for 500 million, uh, five hundred thousand dollars. There's some kind of problem here, right? There's, there's it's a fraction of what we would say. And even when courts rule about the cost of damage. A US Attorney General calculated the loss to be about $6 million. But really, is, is that all our personal information is worth when there are claims that in Australia alone, the cost of cyber attacks are costing our organizations $33 billion a year, according to statistics. So there's this anomalous situation, the paradox of the personal data that we know is sensitive and gaining momentum out there on the dark web, but also the cost of it seems to be somewhat measured um, and there is a reason, you know, one wonders why, but increasingly I would say the stakes are getting higher with the sensitivity of the data. What if I was to say to you tomorrow, they will be taking our biometrics uh, and right. other sensitive health data and, and financial data, then it becomes uh, more concerning. Katina, what we, we, as an individual customer, I think when, you know, sometimes things hit a bank that you're not a customer of, or they hit a hit a, an organization that you don't use. I get the sense that a lot of people have used Ticketmaster at least once in their lives. Uh, what should we be looking out for at this point in time? Um, because I gather in Canada, at least, there are privacy laws that demand that if there's been a breach, the privacy commissioner has to be told. That's definitely the case in Australia as well. And you have a short time frame, uh, particularly if the breach is over a certain amount and you have to convey that information uh, to subscribers. So people should be looking out for an email. And I know this sounds a little bit funny, but make sure it's not a hoax email that you're receiving. Right. Uh, but if you are looking for that, look into your scam folders as well. Possibly uh, the email has gone to a spam or scam folder um, and just have a look at its authenticity, but look for the next steps. Often there'll be a link embedded in that email from your provider uh, and make sure you follow that and read the instructions that they give. Most likely they will say, please change your password uh, and make sure uh, it is not the same as other passwords you have on other uh, sites. Uh, but my additional advice would be for people who have dormant accounts that they haven't used for a while, do you really need that account? Maybe consider deleting it or even consider deleting older emails that are not in use at the moment because that does increase the potential uh, for people to con con continue to conduct uh, identity fraud or other types of fraud uh, on your behalf. But do take precautions um, and watch your credit card uh, data coming through the transactions on that and look for fraudulent uh, transactions, unexpected bills or just strange amounts. And don't always think the amounts will be big amounts. It could be a couple of cents per month or a couple of dollars per month uh, at times. But maybe reach out uh, if you're really concerned, e.g. you're wanting to make sure your credit history is is intact and, and also perhaps you're going for a loan for a car or a house. Um, make sure you do check with a credit reporting bureau. Often these checks are free uh, once every three months or so. You know, do reach out to Equifax, Ileon or Experion or your local providers uh, and just check what's going on there with your credit history if you're really concerned because you are trying to increase your credit rating. Right, because I get the impression that many of us could be doing quite a bit more to insulate ourselves a little bit from this. I mean, perhaps not in the case of something like Ticketmaster, but uh, there are things we should be doing to try to reduce uh, the likelihood that we will be that we will end up caught up in one of these hacks. Yes, it, it's quite normal. You know, we've become lax as a community because there are so many of these data breaches and many of us each year are subject to multiple data breaches. In Australia, we've seen the Optus hack, the Medic uh, Bank hack, and now this one. And it's most likely that people have been caught in the web of all of these three hacks that were very substantial. There's only 26 million people in Australia and about mm -hmm. 10 million of them were caught up in the Optus hack. So that's a lot of adult population if you want to talk about it in percentage terms. And we've had passports, Medicare numbers, phone numbers, credit cards all go missing uh, and found themselves on the dark web. And it's pretty serious. Uh, companies are being slapped with fines, uh, but also citizens are being told to build their capacity and awareness around the security problem. So what can we do? 
you know, don't use the same password across platforms. Do actually act when there is a notified breach. Don't be lax and say, oh, well, it's, it's just another password and the password is the word password. So why even bother yeah. going and changing it? You know, we need to change our practices. And this is really shifting behaviors of consumers and shifting mental models from security is as much my concern as it is the company I'm subscribing to and who's providing the service. And I'm going to go further and say it is also the cloud computing company's uh, problem who has that business like Ticketmaster on their platform. And often we don't see this, but it is a ripple effect down and up the chain. And I would say responsabilization is really important, even at the federal government level that to say, you know, how can we empower our organizations and our customers? But Cybersecurity is a thing that's always moving. And so when we have the movement of employees from one company to the next all over the world, uh, they're gaining and maturing as skillful cybersecurity personnel. And if they do turn rogue and they do become part of an international syndicate, as we've seen the formation of shiny hunters, they're very mm -hmm. brazen outfits. You know, they publish when they've conducted a breach. It's almost like yeah. saying, you know, there's a, a, a traffic camera there and you're going to speed right past it and wave to the officer, I'm speeding and hello, how are you? And that's exactly what's going on now with uh, these virtual crimes that we're seeing. I mean, as I'm going to, I'm going to restate here, Ticketmaster used passwords unlawfully themselves retained mm -hmm. by a former employee to gain access to a competitor's um, systems, right? So they could see which clients they had on their website and the latest kinds of web innovations on their website. So Ticketmaster is now subject to that which it did to another competitor. And uh, I want to tell that story because you'll find that on the web and you won't believe the, the federal court hearings uh, that subsequently came from that hack uh, because it was a company hacking another company. And here we have uh, an international syndicate now targeting that company that hacked another company, you know. So if we're not showing good practice as an organization, uh, that is not a good look to uh, international syndicates who are saying, well, if you're doing that, we'll do that too. Yeah. Katina, thank you for your time. I appreciate your insight on this. I guess we'll stay tuned and watch out for those emails if they do in fact arrive from the company warning us that, uh, that our accounts have indeed, been, have indeed been breached. Thank you for your time. May we all stay safe and secure. Now let me be given the opportunity